there it is, the almighty Adepticon t-shirt. I know it says 13 on it, but it does say 2015 on the back, so it's not an error. I believe it is just the 13th Adepticon. So, a little bit confusing, I accept. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a Vlogwork Orange. The brand new extra snazzy edition of the Vlogwork Orange, which will hopefully have had a brand new extra snazzy intro, and maybe some nifty background effects going on. No expense spared. Now then, the reason that I haven't put too many videos up lately is because I spent a couple of weeks in the good old US of A, and I'm going to outline my various exploits right now. So that's going to be fun, isn't it? So, first things first. The journey. Getting from Manchester to Chicago. Slightly more complicated than one might think. So, when I was choosing my flight originally, I decided to go with a combination of Royal Dutch Airlines and Delta Airlines, because that was very cheap. It was the cheapest, in fact, that didn't go through any country that I'd rather not be stuck in. It wouldn't be ideal if I was flying via the Ukraine, for example. Not only would you not want to get stuck somewhere like that, but it seemed a little bit risky to me, so I thought going via Amsterdam, can't go wrong there, everyone speaks English pretty much, what could possibly go wrong? So, first of all, on my way to the airport in the morning, I was full of life, full of exuberance, ready to go on this worldwide adventure. And first of all, the lift, I can still call it a lift because we're still in the UK at this point, the adventure hasn't passed over to America yet. So the lift to the airport terminal thingies from the train station was out of order. So I thought, hmm, that could be a sign of things to come, but let's hope not. Then I got to the desk, and I was checking in, and apparently my flight to Amsterdam has been delayed quite considerably because of adverse weather conditions, so I would very likely miss my connecting flight to Chicago. So I was presented with a couple of options. I could either fly to Amsterdam, hopefully make the connecting flight, and if I didn't, I would have to probably stay there the night. Or I could just go home and come back the next day and try and get the same flight combination. But it's possible if I'd done that, then I would have had exactly the same issues. So I would have been just a day behind on my travel. So I thought, well, I'll fly to Amsterdam right now, everyone speaks English. If I get stuck there, it's not completely the end of the world. At least I'll be part way into my journey then, so I'll be able to get the flight the next day quite easily. So, I got there eventually, I did miss the connecting flights by quite some distance, and I had to line up for a couple of hours to try and get put onto the next flight tomorrow, as you do. So after a couple of hours, with the, the slowest moving queue of all time, I finally got to the front, and it should be pointed out actually that the guy behind me was also trying to get to Chicago O'Hare Airport, because I heard him say that several times, so keep that in mind. I got to the front of the queue, went to the desk, and the lady said, how long have you been waiting in the queue? And I said, a couple of hours. And she said, well here, take this, if you run, you'll make it to this flight back to England. And then from there, you can get onto another flight direct to Chicago on a different airline. So, of course, I took that and I ran to the terminal, just making it onto this flight back to England, which is the only way I was going to make it to Chicago on the right day. So I just made it into that. As soon as I got through and checked in for that flight, they immediately shut the door. And then a little bus took us to the plane, which I've never experienced before, but it was only a very small little plane. I did have plenty of legroom, though, because I had the emergency exit seat. So presumably... It was definitely the last seat as well, there were no other seats available. So I would assume the emergency exit seats are more expensive, so they still last. I don't know. But because it was the last flight, what was running through my head was, if I would stepped out of the queue for five seconds and that other guy had gone in front of me, presumably he would have been put on that flight to Heathrow in order to get the flight to Chicago. So I think he was pretty much screwed because he was behind me in the queue anyway and I had to run to make it to this flight so even if it wasn't the last seat I don't think he would have made it. So I'm back in England now 
at Heathrow Airport, and I just make it onto the flight with American Airlines for Chicago, and most of it is empty, the flight. People are able to lie down and just sleep across multiple seats. So, no idea what's going on with that. Also, another thing that should be pointed out before I completely move off Amsterdam. One of the reasons I wasn't too concerned about being stranded there was because I am a master of Dutch. I know a total of two Dutch phrases, which I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation of. First of all, I know pard and snore, which is horse mustache, which is a general all-purpose phrase. And I know broken slang, which is trouser snake. Again, all-purpose phrase, whatever situation you find yourself in, you can probably dig yourself out with one of those two. So, I've got some notes here just so I don't forget anything, because this was quite a lengthy excursion. So, yeah, I just got on that flight to Chicago, and all the meals and all the snacks on all my flights up to this point have been cheese-based. Now, I'm almost 100% sure that I am lactose intolerant, so that's not ideal, although I do have kind of lacto-assistance tablets that I can take, but overdoing it's still a bit risky. So I probably wouldn't have eaten too much anyway because it's food on planes, and they usually just give you, here's a pile of slop and some crackers. So typically I would just eat the crackers and leave the pile of slop. Now when I did make it to Chicago, it was very late at night, and also... Because I had no internet access there, the last time, the last point at which I'd had internet was when I was in London, before I'd got onto the flight. So I'd updated people as best I could regarding what time I was going to be there. But the plane actually got in about an hour early. So I was waiting around Chicago O'Hare Airport for an hour or so. Just waiting to be picked up. Basically, there wasn't a whole lot for me to do around there at that time. And then I was just sitting there waiting, and then the wonderful visage of the WGC head honcho, Mr. Chung, appeared. And he and Ken of Badger Airbrush fame took me back to Ken's place of residence. So we stayed there for the night before moving on to the hotel and the convention the next day. And I met a lot of wonderful people there. But I'm not even going to try to go into naming everybody, because it would take hours and hours. If you're friends with me on Facebook, you've probably seen a large amount of the pictures. As far as my roommates for the convention, I stayed in a room with Chung and a lovely chap by the name of Nestor. To be American and pronounce my R there. I believe he's big in the Infinity community, something like that. He was a nice chap. And the first thing I did, once we deposited all our luggage, Went round, collected the swag bag, and then checked out all the various promotional cards and whatnot inside the swag bag that entitled you to a free miniature. And then I went round and collected all the free miniatures that were available before they ran out. None of which were particularly useful to me. If you've seen the swag bag video, you'll know that it wasn't the greatest swag bag for me personally. And for the first couple of days of the convention, I spent pretty much just hanging around and meeting people and just browsing around the place. I did intend to do a little more videoing than I actually did. I did badger a few people. You'll see a video on that at some point, like I did last year. But I only, I think I only got about three or four people, and then I kind of forgot about that for the rest of the adventure, so it's only a very short badgering video. I pretty much just badgered a handful of people in the Malifaux room, I think it was. And then I just got carried away just hanging out and talking to people, if you will, for the rest of the time. Wi-Fi at the hotel. It wasn't ideal. It was fine when it was in range, but the range only extended to within about 100 yards away from the actual convention area. So every time I wanted to communicate with anyone via the internet or check for messages or anything, I'd have to wander back about 100 yards back to the hotel area. And there was only one very specific point that I could get Wi-Fi that wasn't inside the hotel room. So that wasn't great. So I spent a lot of time wandering back and forth. I'm sure people noticed that. Now, at the convention, I was operating on about one hour of sleep per night. Because there was exciting stuff going on in the evenings and exciting stuff 
like breakfast going on in the mornings, so if you don't want to miss anything, how can you survive on more than one hour of sleep? That seems to be the only logical solution that I could think of, so that's what I did. And it didn't really come back and bite me too much until game three on day one of the Warhammer tournament. Or about 25 minutes to the end, I just slumped down in my chair. And I hit a wall, as they say. And I felt like I had no energy left whatsoever. There'll be more information on everything that happened in the Warhammer tournament and the outcomes of all the games in a separate video, by the way. Because I'm sure that's going to get some stellar ratings for my channel. Because most of my top viewed videos are all Warhammer Fantasy based. So, yeah, I managed to do quite well considering I was on one hour of sleep a night each day. But after that, because there was some kind of party going on that evening, I decided I'd have a nap after that last Warhammer game of the day. So I did that, and then I was fresh and full of energy for the evening's activities, which was a little bit of a weird party, because it starts off in one room and then they had to move it around to multiple rooms because they didn't have permission to serve alcohol or something, and then they took away all the alcohol and moved it to somewhere else that wasn't anywhere near where people were actually partying. So I didn't hang around that whole thing too long. I believe I just settled for a more quiet, like, intimate setting with a group of about ten people that were just hanging out upstairs. Speaking of alcohol, there was a guy roaming around the hotel with a booze cart, just giving alcohol to people. I'm pretty sure that's not legal, but he was doing it. I'm pretty sure he was there last year as well. Let's see, what are the games that I played while I was there other than the Warhammer tournament? Not too many. I did play one game of Malifaux with Michelle, aka Oasis Rising, and I was ably assisted by the legendary Mr. David Pease, because I've only played one demo game before, so I did need a little bit of help. But I have a feeling he was actually a saboteur, because I did end up losing my undefeated record. So I'm not pleased by that. If I ever get into that game, I'll have to try and get my record back above 50%. It seems it's one of those games I feel like I could get into. It's just I need to get the right level of finances first before I jump in. Everything, speaking of finances, actually, everything in the hotel was horribly overpriced, as you'd expect with it being a hotel. There were bottles of water that were obscenely expensive, and all the food in the various on-site restaurants was, of course, outrageously overpriced. There were signs up as well saying no outside food or beverages, but I don't think there was one person that actually observed that rule. I brought in plenty of food and beverages. So, maybe I'll get a SWAT team busting through my door any minute now that I've just admitted that on camera. Seems unlikely, though. And as far as food goes, I was slightly more open to trying new things than I usually am, and slightly more open than I was last year, although the majority of stuff I ate was just fries or... Failing that, the blandest thing they had available, the least flavoured meat they had on offer, pretty much. So I did try one or two more exciting things than I normally would, but not too much. Also, people did have to help me order food quite a bit, because in a lot of restaurants, the waiters and whatnot are quite commonly not native English speakers. So when you combine that with trying to communicate with someone who's got an accent that they probably aren't used to, then it becomes quite difficult trying to get a bit of a two-way dialogue going, so I needed people to help me out quite a bit. And also people helping me working out how much I was supposed to pay as well, because you know what Americans are like with their taxes and tips and whatnot. The price you see is never the price you pay. Now, so it was a wonderful experience, Adepticon in general, mainly because of all the people there, I knew them slightly better than I did last year, most of them a lot better. People that I didn't know at all last year, and just saw around the place, maybe said hello to, I'd probably communicated with a bit online during the last year, so I was able to talk to them a lot more. And people that I already knew quite a bit last time, obviously I know even better now. So, that was good. And there were some people that I'd never met before that I met this time, and I did put in a bit of effort to try and get to know people that I didn't know at all, rather than leaving it another year. So there were some various A-list people there, like the legendary game designer Andy Chambers, for instance. So I spoke to him a bit. The venue was bigger, but it didn't feel as full because it was bigger. So you weren't constantly bumping into people. 
quite a lot of people though, just a lot more space than last time, which is probably what it needed if it's going to keep expanding year on year. I didn't spend a lot of money, as you'll know if you saw my acquisitions video. I was trying to limit my spending significantly so that I can afford to do this kind of thing more often, and also because I was going on part two of the adventure, which I'll get to in a minute. Now, after Adepticon, my plan was to fly to San Francisco to attend WrestleMania the following weekend. However, it was snowing the last day of the convention, and I said to people, that's not going to delay the flight, is it? Just because I'm in England and one snowflake drops down and suddenly the whole country grinds to a halt and nothing operates at all. But over there I thought, well, maybe they're a bit more used to this kind of thing. Maybe they, they deal a bit better with these weather conditions. And people said, no, no, it'll be fine. The flights probably won't be delayed for a little bit of snow. We're used to that. However, the next day... I found out that I was on a connecting flight first of all to Minneapolis, which was then going to San Francisco, and my first flight was delayed by four hours. Yes. Now, I didn't even have it as bad as some other people. Some people were waiting at the airport for up to nine or ten hours for their flights. Because their flights were earlier in the day than mine, and it was just a certain point where the snow became bearable and they could start taking off again. So mine wasn't delayed by as much as other people's. So, yeah, so I missed my connecting flight, obviously. I think it was maybe more like delayed by three hours, something like that, and then there was another hour while I had to wait for a different flight in Minneapolis, so I'd hang around two airports for quite a while, just sitting there. And while in Chicago Airport, actually, before I got onto my delayed flight, there was an incident, shall we say, where there was a little bit of airport rage, if you will, where a woman who was walking along accidentally bumped into the back of somebody with her backpack, I think. Just some crazy old man, and then he apparently shoved her. Which is unacceptable behaviour in an airport or anywhere, quite frankly. So then he was ejected from the airport. I didn't actually see all of the incident, but apparently a, a very effeminate man rescued her. And then he was being congratulated by a lot of people. So it was a little bit of excitement just to keep things spicy. Also, while I was at that airport, I did see quite a lot of people from the convention wandering past, looking perturbed that their flights had been delayed, but I didn't really get to speak to any of them because I didn't want to lose my seat, quite honestly. And they looked in a hurry anyway, so they might have been on their way to a flight. Let's see. So, on the flight from Minneapolis to San Francisco, I was seated next to what can only be described as a jittery Hispanic man. Yeah, there's not much more to say about that. To be honest, he did try to communicate with me a couple of times, but I couldn't really understand anything he was saying. So, because that flight was delayed, I also arrived there really late at night, like my previous arrival. But that wasn't too bad, because the place I was staying was within walking distance of the train station, which I was able to get. Even that late at night, the train was still running from the airport to the station, so that was fine. And... I'd been surviving on one hour of sleep a night up to this point, but from this point on, even though I was sleeping mostly on sofas and occasionally an air mattress if I was lucky, I actually got a pretty damn good night's sleep every single night. So that was really weird. Normally I can't sleep at all on sofas. I only sleep for an hour and then just wake up and can't get back to sleep again. But I think my body just had enough of sleep deprivation. I just said, you know what? We're actually going to let you sleep this week. We feel like you need it. You've earned it. So that was nice. The temperature difference, it felt like I'd moved between continents, not just to different parts of the same country, from the snow in Chicago, and it was snowing in Minneapolis as well, at the airport, and then in San Francisco, sun. So I went from having to dress in winter clothes to t-shirt every day, pretty much, sunglasses. So that was a nice change, and I don't know if you can still see the effects of that, but Maybe you can see where there's a little bit of sunburn in the facial region. It might have gone by now. It was a couple of weeks ago. So, the people I was staying with in... Well, I spent a bit of time in San Francisco and a bit of time in Sacramento hopping between the two locations because of the different people I was staying with, depending on what we were doing on any particular day, which region we were in. So I did make the journey up and down between those two places quite a few times. Uh, let's see. Gaming-wise, I'll try and keep this vaguely gaming-related. Didn't do a whole lot of actual 
kind of tabletop gaming, we did kind of start an RPG session in some rule set or other. But we didn't actually get beyond character creation. But I made a hacker who was known as the Tickler, and his that was his thing. He tickles security systems, and every system is ticklish was his trademark. He was supposed to be really tall, like mysterious black guy, and he can just tickle anything. That was the idea behind that character, but it never got to play out because we only had one session until people were separated by moving around all over the place. So these are my various wrestling fan friends I was staying with, by the way, and different ones of them came in throughout the week into the city and we were all just hanging out generally. Somewhat gaming related, a video game if you will, I did get soundly whooped at Super Smash Bros. on the Wii quite a lot, because I haven't really played it, I'm terrible at it, but I did own everybody at Mario Kart though, even though I've never played it before. Apparently my skills from Mario Kart Double Dash on the GameCube have remained to this day. They're permanently in my fingertips, it's like riding a bike, you never forget. So I was able to whoop everybody soundly at that. There was a little bit of gaming actually, when we were in Sacramento, because Chrissy, the Queen of Malifaux, has, who I've spent a bit of time with at Adepticon, her local game store is in that region, so I took some of my non-gaming, non-tabletop gaming friends down there, and they got a Malifaux dinner, which they enjoyed quite a bit, so maybe they'll get into miniatures gaming at some point. Who knows? I can live in hope. Everyone should really get into it at some point, shouldn't they? Also, that local game shop, which was Great Escape Games in Sacramento, seemed very nice in there. There wasn't even too bad a smell, which is nice. You'd expect somewhere that's full of that many gamers to have a little bit of a stench to it, but no. Very nice. So, over that week before WrestleMania, we pretty much just explored various cities, went to the beach, and I witnessed a horrific dog attack, where a large pit bull savaged, probably to death, a tiny little poodle-type dog. It had its jaws like clamped around the tiny dog's head for a really long time, while the owner, who was some huge muscular man, was trying to pry its jaws open unsuccessfully, and only, only let go when a woman came up to it and, like, choked it with a red scarf thing, and that was the only way it let go. But I imagine the tiny dog probably didn't survive, although it was being rushed to a vet, so that was quite traumatic. There were children screaming, running all over the place, so that, that soured that day a little bit. And also... I've worded it like this in my notes, so I'm going to have to say it. I spent a few hours probing the Old Sac region. Yes, there was a place in Sacramento called Old Sac. It was quite nice, actually. Very pleasant. As a running theme, actually, all the places I visited in the USA were just really, really pleasant and friendly. Probably because I didn't spend any time in any of the more impoverished areas. I don't know whether they're slightly more dicey, if you will. And when it came to attending WrestleMania, sweet, that's where I got all my sunburn though, because I was sat directly in the sun for six hours. And the, it looked like the sun was going to be blocked by a corner of the stadium, except the way the sun came down, it went across the corner of the stadium, so there's about one minute of no sun, and then it just popped out the corner again. So, sun directly in my face all the time, it's really lucky I had sunglasses, and it's lucky that I applied some sunscreen to all the relevant areas, apart from my forehead, I think, which is the only place that's showing any burn, I believe. Maybe the nose, maybe you can see some outline of my sunglasses on there, perhaps. I hope not. So, that was a lot of fun. That's the first wrestling event that I've been to live. And then I also went to Monday Night Raw the following night, which was also very good. I got a better view in there. At WrestleMania, the view is pretty good as well, better than average view. D what didn't have any obstructions in the way of the ring, you pretty much see what was going on. I had to look up at the big screen whenever there was any kind of stare down between people and I wanted to see their face expression, or if something was going on on the opposite side of the ring to where I was. But if you want to hear more about my views on the wrestling events, I'm not going to go into that too much in this video, because I don't know how many wrestling fans there are, but I will put a link to my wrestling podcast in the description, if there are any wrestling fans out there who might be interested in that, and you'll hear more in-depth thoughts on those wrestling events. And another little bit of gaming stuff, actually, I did get some of my non-tabletop gaming friends to play the Tarot of Locker, 
because they are quite happy to play card games and they enjoyed that. So, that's pretty much the extent of my exploits. Obviously I haven't told you absolutely everything because some of it's escaped my memory right now because it has been a couple of weeks and it was a very long adventure, very tiring adventure. But I can tell you about the flight from San Francisco to Amsterdam. I thought, well, surely flights can't be delayed in San Francisco. The sun's out. It's never going to snow here. But it was delayed a little bit by about half an hour. And I had a connecting flight that was pretty close to when it was supposed to land, so I was a little bit concerned. And, and then I heard the captain say, we're a little bit delayed taking off, so we've taken on extra fuel and we'll be flying extra fast. I've never heard anyone on a plane say that before. I didn't even know that was a thing, so that was a little bit concerning for a while there. You'd think that planes would just fly as fast as they can anyway to get from point A to point B for financial reasons. But apparently they can go extra fast if they're running late. I would assume the reason they don't do that normally is because there's some kind of risk involved in going extra fast. No idea. Well, that was a little bit worrying when he said that, but it was fine. Got to Amsterdam, then to Manchester, then home, with no further issues. And it wasn't even cold when I got back to Manchester, so that was nice. The sun was out for quite a few of the days I've been back since then. It has got a little bit cold today outside, but we did have a little bit of a heat wave, which I'm taking credit for. I must have brought that back with me from the west coast of the US of A. And also, a couple of days after I got home, there was a package from Germany that arrived for me, which you can check out a separate video to see. And it did contain one thing, which I'm going to show you right now, actually. So the package was from Miss Dreddy of Germany. If you want to see what that contains, check out the separate video. But it also contained this rather wonderful Kinder chocolate, which I'm going to open and sample right now to see if it's the same as the stuff we get here under this name. I would assume maybe it's even nicer if it's the stuff that they put into their own people. Let's find out, shall we? That actually does taste slightly better than the stuff we get here under the Kinder name. I don't know whether that's just because it was fresher, because it was fresh in Germany and then just sent over here by post. But it does taste pretty damn good. You can go now, I'm just going to eat this. Still there. 